Achlingitsai Tukane Dach Kawak Chuchi Chui Hat Udulasa Kleg Achsai Ach Katago Dacha de Shudahoe Achjit Udulati Rune Te Ach The lady that I'm named after is Nellie Willard. She used to be a um, translator. In the early days, she translated uh, for the elders, and she translated in the church, in the Salvation Army Church. Um, Kwasiku Ach Kla Ka Ach Ish Kuchain Ach Ish Yedua Saga Ka Ach Kla Anshecht Yedua Saga Ach Lil Ach Kla Du Kla Annie Jimmy Ka Klega Ach Lil Ka Ah Tom Jimmy Ach ish shangu kedi usiti katu tlakon dach ak awe kecha uawat I was raised in in tlakon and my language in the home that's all they spoke was Slingit and um, so I had my, my grandpa and my grandma who did Slingit and Slingit language was happening around me all the time and the other grandpa I was exposed to was Grandpa Jimmy Fox and um, just to give you an idea Grandpa Jimmy Fox was born in 1853, and his sister, which was my grandma, she was born in 1868, and her husband, Tom Jimmy, was in 18... Hmm. I know he was just a teenager when he did the Chilkoot Trail, so they were young men. And then my mom and dad, they were both uh, about a year apart, 1904 and 19. They're not really my parents, but they're my grandparents. She was my great aunt. My biological mother's relatives is who raised me. Um, and that's where my Tlingit language came from. If they didn't take me in as their child to raise as their own, I wouldn't have the language. So that's where my Tlingit language came from. And um, I think even at an early age, I realized that our home was different than my peers, kids who were my age. I didn't have anybody to talk, fling it with. But I was always around elders. But when I was around my peers, I noticed that I didn't hear Tlingit in their homes. And I probably learned more English from my peers. <laughs> and uh, But I do remember going into school for the first time and realizing that um, I didn't understand everything that they were saying. I had no clue. So I got sent home <laughs> <laughs> at a very early age. So my mom and dad were told that they needed to speak more Tlingit in the home. I mean, excuse me, more English in the home. And it was a long, 
I, I don't know how long my mom and dad tried, but um, my mom taught me ABCs. Somebody taught her ABCs. She, in turn, worked with me. She learned it as she was teaching me and counting. I remember that very well. And um, one of the ladies that was working at the school got took me home from the school and told my mom and dad that they were to um, speak more English in the home with me. And so to try to do that, my, my mom and dad, I think that was the first time there was so much silence in my home. It was so thick when I think about it now. The laughter was gone. The conversations were gone. There was just silence. And I used to miss it. I remember sneaking back out of my bed because I could hear my mom and dad visiting each other, laughing. And, and I wasn't a part of that. So I remember sneaking out of my bed and going sitting under the table so I, just so I could feel good inside again. <laughs> but, but it didn't last very long because my mom and dad figured, you know, I would learn English anyway. So we got our laughter back in our home and things continued on. And... Um, I'm very thankful for their not giving up and not giving in to that. They did realize that I would eventually learn who was going to be out there. And so, um, There were other elders. In fact, I made a big long list today of all the elders that were involved in my life and how thankful and I feel honored that they took the time. Some of them would meet me even as I was a little child. They'd talk Tlingit to me. They knew I understood it and um, and they didn't treat me like a little child. You know how you meet little kids and you just talk, kids talk with them? They never did that. They, just treated me like I was just one of them. <laughs> and unfortunately, when I went to school, I, I was further away from my language. I went to Shimao Indian School, and um, I think that was a shock. I felt like um, the core of who I was couldn't come out. So I went many years being silent, and then I came back home, probably in my 20s, early, I was 20, and started raising a family, sorry. And when I started having children, my dad used to tell me to talk to my baby, my newborn child in Tlingit. I knew what he was saying, but I couldn't do it. He always talked Tlingit to me when I came home, but I could I found myself not my language went dormant in me for a while, but the more he talked to me, I was able to talk with him and he understood me and some elders, but I always understood. And um, what he was telling me to do was to speak in my child's ear and tell him that he was Slingit and he was a very special person. And when he realized I didn't do that, he did it. Every time I brought a newborn child to him, 
I see him pick up my children and hold them and then he'd bend down and I could just hear him whispering into my children's ears and I knew he was telling them that they were very special and they are. <laughs> so after my dad passed away then again I really didn't have anybody to talk to and I met I was at a conference up in Anchorage and Maria Smith was there she was a special guest that day I never met her I never went by her everybody went and shook hands with her and met her but I stood as close as I dared to stand because everybody knew her as the last speaker of EAC. And I think that was when it hit home to me that, and this was about 14 years ago maybe, that um, our language, which I knew I had inside of me, was going to go if we didn't work together or and so I started trying to figure out how I could do it and I had f um, a friend who always tried to ask me to come and teach but I never knew I could I just used to hold back I couldn't do it for one if I walked into the school my insides would just I don't know how to explain it. it. It's like it would just like, quiver. An old feeling would creep up in me, and it's a different environment. And even though I had gone to high school, I'd gone to some college, but going into a grade school, maybe hearing voices, kids' voices, used to do something to me. But I got over that. If I didn't get over that, I had to kind of look at my, why was I going through that? And um, I think it's that suppressing of who I really was, who my mom and dad helped me to be. Could never be. I couldn't make it. I was different. I felt different all the time. And then um, when I finally did make up my mind that I was going to help in whatever way I can to teach the language, um, because I never taught my children, never taught them, and I felt like for what I went through, feeling different all my life, that um, I just did not want them to feel like that. My thought when my dad told me to teach them Tlingit, to speak to them, was my thought was why, when nobody else was talking to me. So. Who are my kids going to talk to? And I did not want them to feel inside like I did. And that was a choice I made. It's a tough choice. So I, before I started, I went to my children and I had to ask, I literally asked them, I let them know what I was going to do, but I asked them to forgive me for not sharing with them. Because I knew I could not go out and teach the language without knowing I, knowing I hadn't taught my own children. I had to make that peace with them.
and then um, one of my children didn't answer me back. I have five, and everybody seemed okay with it. They do wish they had it. They still don't have the language. They all have their own children growing up, raising them somewhere else. And but one of my sons said, I went back to him two weeks later after I talked to him and, um, sorry. <laughs> I asked him again. I hadn't heard from him but I needed to hear from him. And his response, after thinking about it too, was, how can you teach total strangers a part of your life that you never even shared with us, your own children? And it broke my heart that he was hurting so we parted, we just left it like that, and I had to think about it, and so I thought about it another two weeks before I called him back. But in that time, I never did tell my children how I felt. I never told him anything. But until I explained it to him, that our language wasn't being used out there anymore and I didn't want them to go through what I went through. I wasn't, didn't have my hands slapped, I didn't have my mouth washed out. It was just that there was no place in society for us. And I just didn't want my kids to go through that. At the time, it felt like it was the right thing, but I know now it wasn't. But I told him, at least, you know, we can try to do the best we can. But my son eventually, after I explained it, understood a lot better how I felt. And I think it was through going through that, speaking to my children and sharing with them was the beginning of a healing that took place down deep in my heart. That I never needed to be ashamed of who I am. I never needed to be ashamed of what these elders that raised me The way their thought, the way they saw the world is something they put inside of me.